In the titration of a weak acid by a strong base, there's a region where the pH changes slowly as you add the base. That's called the buffer region. It's the region where the acid and conjugate base are about equal concentrations. Now, this buffer region occurs about halfway to the equivalence point. That's the center of the buffer region. That's where you've converted half of the acid into the conjugate base, and those concentrations are equal. Now, at this point, the titration can continue, but the pH will change slowly. And the pH will change slowly prior to that point. And why is that? Well, at this point and in this region, you have acid and conjugate base. They are both ready to accept strong acid or strong base that's added. For instance, if I add another drop of strong base, that will react with some of the weak acid that's there. If I add another drop of acid, say reverse along the titration curve, well, that will be consumed by some of the weak base that's there. And both of these reactions, the weak acid consuming the strong base and the weak base consuming the strong acid, both lie strongly towards the products. The K for both of these reactions is much greater than 1. And how do I know that? Well, look at the reverse reactions. For instance, the reverse reaction here, HA plus H2O goes to H3O plus and A minus. By now, that should jump out at you as the acid dissociation reaction for a weak acid. For instance, acetic acid, if that were our acid, this reaction going in this direction would have a K of around 10 to the minus 5. That means going back in this direction, we'd have 1 over that, something like K to the plus 5. Same thing here, this is the reaction of the weak base with water going in reverse. So for acetic acid, this has something like 10 to the minus 10. So going in this direction, 10 to the plus 10. So both of these equilibria lie strongly towards products. Both of them consume acid and base. Strong acid and base consumed, converted into weak acid and base. So whether I add a little acid or a little base, the pH doesn't change very much. And we can watch that happen. I have here set up three solutions, a basic solution that's unbuffered, a basic solution that's buffered, and here just a standard for comparison. I'm going to add acid to all three of these, and I'm going to do it in a unique way. I'm going to add solid carbon dioxide. When I add solid carbon dioxide, that dissolves and forms carbonic acid. So that will acidify the solutions. I'll acidify the solutions, and let's watch how fast the pH changes. So here to the buffered solution, and here to the unbuffered solution. Now watch, as the solutions are acidified, the unbuffered solution, pH changes rapidly. And you can see that by the color change in the indicator. In the buffered solution, a slow change in pH. This buffered solution resists change in pH. As acid is added, it's converted to a weak base, and the pH changes slowly. That's the effect of a buffer in solution.